to keep threats away from our shores. Threats. Kinds of missions. Right. Win war. I'm Commander Brent Smith, uh, USS Paul Hamilton. Today we're out doing some approach visits on uh, some of the local fishermen. Okay, keep him on your starboard bow, please. Ooh, he's moving around. This one's pretty unstable. Tell him to do a flag verification. I'll stop. I'll let him stop. You have permission to clear the vessel? Actively engaged in fishing. Okay, are they done with this one? Let's get a flag on this one, too. These guys are more than willing to come and chat. You can see them, see them out there. there there's three of them sitting around trying to, trying to communicate with our folks. And they're really out here just trying to make a living. I mean, they're all out here fishing. They really didn't want to be left alone by, uh, you know, any, any of the bad actors in the area. And what he means by bad actors in the area? Pirates. Real, modern-day pirates. Hijacking ships, taking hostages, and demanding millions of dollars in ransom. It's a deadly, profitable business. Can't watch every ship in the area. CTF-151 protects ships by the air. One such ship is the newest Arleigh Burke class destroyer. It boasts as the most capable, all steel, surface combatant in the Navy. USS Paul Hamilton is one of these DDG 51 class destroyers. Although the capabilities are similar, the destroyer can act more independent than the first on the scene cruiser that supports others in the fleet. A DDG is a, a multi-mission platform. We can handle all kinds of uh, missions that are assigned to us. Uh, Anti-air warfare, uh, anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare. Those are our primary mission warfare areas. And uh, Paul Hamilton has just been recently outfitted with a new mission area, ballistic missile defense. Paul Hamilton is the most survivable surface ship in the world. Its angular shape is designed to reduce detection. We see all these angles, again, that's uh, for radar cross-section reduction, uh, adding a little bit of stealth to the ship design. Uh, you can see it all the way, even on the mast. And the large flared hull is designed to permit high speed in high seas. Inside the Command Information Center is the heart of the Aegis Air Defense System. This is the ship's combat information center. It's where the TAO operates the, uh, the ship's sensors and all, this, all the weapon systems. And the CIC is protected by Kevlar shielding. The ship's four SPY-1D phased array radars send out beams of electromagnetic energy in all directions simultaneously, tracking hundreds of targets at the same time. Uh, what we do over here is we're tracking radar, specifically for threat emitters. It is designed to counter all current missile threats to the Navy. And the weapons are so precise and they, and they work so well now. We finally got the computing power and we've developed the software where our tracking systems can make the adjustments in our firing that allow us to hit a bullet with a bullet. In front of me, uh, we got our 5-inch gun. Uh, it's uh, used for anti-surface and also for anti-air. Knock whatever's out there out of the sky. Okay, this is the 25-millimeter uh, chain gun. It is uh, one of our uh, crew-served weapons that we use to engage small threats. This is pretty good. It makes a pretty good pop. Uh, it's a very visible round. When it hits the water, uh, the people know that they're being shot at. And that's really what we're trying to do with the small craft is deter them, uh, let them know that they're approaching danger. These rounds, they're not a high explosive round or anything. They're a kinetic round. So it's just like a, a very big rifle. Uh, so there's no uh, explosion at the end of these. This is a twin 50 caliber gun. Good thing about it is you take, we take a tried and true weapon that's been around for a long time, very effective. And what you do is you mount two of them together, you effectively double your rate of fire and double your fire, fire power. And that's what we've got here. Uh, it's, it's a blast to shoot. Obviously it's very loud and it moves a lot. So it takes a lot of practice to, to hold it where you want it and put that round where you want it, want it to end up. A lot of this stuff, these uh, small caliber weapons that we use against small craft, uh, it's not something that we keep mounted or keep up all the time. So we have to really train the crew on and, and raise up their proficiency. It's a blast to shoot. We take every opportunity that we can to do live firing. We've got to have guys that know what to do, 
how to do it, and it can respond as soon as they're told to uh, from the controlling stations. With a wide array of both offensive and defensive weapon systems, both the guided missile destroyer is not only the most dominant...